I'm Randy Scheiman here with Lori Dobbins. And uh, we are here for another round of Create Talks. And uh, Lori, we want to welcome you. Um, I am just so excited to have this opportunity as a Create Academy um, kind of alum with me um, that we can just sit there and talk about how we're living out our dreams. And since this is Dream Month, right? This is the, the Dream Boot Camp in Create Academy this summer. Um, we're, we, I just love talking to people about their dreams, living them out, um, overcoming their challenges. And um, we've known each other for a couple of years from Create Academy. So yeah. we both went through um, uh, Create Academy Live together. And uh, here we are two years later, right? About Two so, years, yeah. Can you just tell me a little bit about uh, your journey there, and you just uh, let's just talk about your dreams and you know some that have you 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 really still have to come to fruition, and some that haven't happened. But let's just kind of give me a brief, quick update of just your life so far, and then we'll get into the details more shortly. Well, thank you, Randy. Um, I came into Create Academy two years ago, like you said, and I was in the middle, well, it was the middle of the pandemic and I'm immune compromised, so I couldn't go anywhere. So I ended up learning how to paint. I never picked up a paintbrush in my life. This painting here is the fourth one I've ever done. <laughs> and so um, it was just a gift that God just poured out on me. And I was, uh, I felt led to do prophetic words and paintings for a hundred people on, a, no, no, I'm sorry, forgive me. It was um, 30 or 40 people, I can't remember. And I did a paint, it was a hundred dollars to mail the box. That's where the hundred comes from. <laughs> and, and they were all words that I had never heard of anybody doing that with creativity before. Highly ministered to everybody that was there. Um, and so what ended up happening from that point is I found Teresa on Facebook and then I found out that there's a whole community of people that are prophesying and using their their works and and all that kind of stuff and so I got into that at the time I was still like copying paintings I'd have to see a picture and then I could paint it from a picture so one of my dreams, of course, was to get better as an artist. And that's one of the first courses that we do in Create Academy. Um, it's a second course, I believe, where we are learning how to undo our fears. And one of my fears was perfectionism. And I still have not painted on stage at a church yet. I know that's coming and that'll be another fear to overcome. Uh, but the one thing that really happened this year through Create Academy is God gave me a vision for a children's book. And we did the course my first year. Well, we do it every year, but it's called Create for Kids. And I was kind of upset that we were doing it because I thought this should only be somebody that's in the children's ministry, right? And so after we did the course, my life was just blown apart and I was like God gave me this idea for this children's book it's about my little Ollie you can see him up on the wall I'm putting all my paintings up there um here's a closer picture of him <laughs> he's raking away dirt clumps because he's afraid of shadows and he ends up me I'm sorry I don't have a painting right now of uh the brilliant blue dove but we all know who that is right it's the Holy Spirit and so I'm writing the book secularly so I can go into the schools and into the library and into the zoos uh, and be able to read it with children and paint with them. So that's one of my major dreams, Randy, is to be able to get this book published, get my website up. I never thought something like this would happen. And now you guys, I can paint him in other positions. I don't have to copy him. I could draw him from my head. I was never one of those little girls that sat around drawing because I didn't know how. And now wow. I do. <laughs> Lori, I think, I think what's so cool about what you just shared there is just how God just can unveil things. Right. He can just sit there. 
you're living your life. I mean, you're married, you're living there in Arizona, you've got your grown children, you, you've been just living your life, pursuing it. And you're like, what is my life purpose? What is my dream? And you get involved with this community. And, and all of a sudden, like you said, we do this class called create for kids. You're like, man, I'm an adult. I've got some grandchildren, but what is going on? And all of a sudden God, then God, right now, God, and suddenly he drops into your spirit, this new idea. And, yes. and, and, and number one, the first one was painting. I mean, just to sit there and to start painting. And I think you told me some about how you painted every day for, yes, for, for a while. Tell us a little I bit about that do. journey <laughs> of, of how you, you, you just took to it and uh, started to grow. And if you're joining us, please put your name in the chat. Let us know where you're from. And if you have any questions for Lori, please, please, please put them in the comments section so that we can uh, uh, just let Lori just encourage you. I believe you're all going to receive an impartation today of just, just uh, something being unlocked inside of you. Hallelujah. So go ahead, Lori. Um, well, I, uh, okay. What was the last question you asked me? I'm sorry. It was, but, you were talking about painting when you, you never oh. really painted. And then all of a sudden, you, I think you said you painted every day for uh, quite a while. No. I did a lot of tutorials. I really believe in tutorials. I think that they help own your skills. Um, you know, like for instance, making a sky in watercolor. Um, it what you do is you get the wash all down, and then you take a tissue and you rub it, and that's what makes your clouds. And so that painting up there, the moon and the dark around it, that. Um, I did look at a tutorial on that to get the idea, but then I, I can do them now. And I learned how to get the creators in, the, in there and everything. There's a really good video you can look up on YouTube from Bob Ross, and it's a parody. And, he, and they make up a song that says, every day is a good day when you paint. And Bob Ross sings it, and they take it out of all of his videos. It's so good. Um, but anyway, that's what my motto is. I go around the house. Every day is a good day when you paint. And I try to paint most every day. Usually every other day for sure, if not every day. And I'm hoping to get Ali published by October or November. And one of the things that I'm sure a question would come up is, how do you get published as a children's writer? Uh, in Within Create Academy, we have writing coaches. And so I... I got with one of the writing coaches and she um, proofread my whole book and put in her suggestions. And now she's waiting for me to get all my paintings done. And that's what's time consuming. And so then I don't have time to do my other paintings that I still want to do. Um, but going back to children, God has opened avenues for me with children in my neighborhood. And they come over and they paint with me and, you know, and I talk about God with them and um, Aiden, he, I don't know, I guess you can kind of see it right there, but he painted a pit or he, yeah, he painted a picture of Ollie. And so that's going to my book because <laughs> it's so cute. I got Ollie stickers made. They're, they're like this big. I'm sorry, I don't have one right here. Um, and those are going in every book. And I give those stickers out when I'm out in public places. So if I find a child, um, I go, oh, honey, I got something for you. And I pull out an Ollie sticker and then I tell the parents about my book. <laughs> so um, I just want to see as many kids minister. Not My goal is not selling tons of books. That might happen. But um, my goal is really to see children minister too. Well, yeah. So what's cool about that is, is you you got these ideas to see, you just started painting, and then you 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 took a class and you got into some community, and then all of a sudden this idea comes in. So, but it was like little puzzle pieces that were coming together. You know, the painting didn't make a lot of sense until you got with the community, right? And then all of a sudden you say, "Wow, I could paint something, and maybe the Holy Spirit will want to say something through it." And then all of a sudden, 
you start painting something new and and it's like wow you have this vision or a thought of ollie and and it's just like oh well that's a character and and so isn't that the way god is with dreams it's not you don't always see everything right up front it's just piece by piece um i know some of us and, and people are watching listening hello margo good to have you here joining us um would just love to hear a little bit more about what, what challenges i mean over the years, what challenges have you faced to try to find your life purpose, to live forth your, um, um, your, you know, sometimes our life purpose is our dream. I don't know wow. if we realize that, right? It, it, it's it's when we're when we find what we're meant to do that we're living our dream, right? And and so, what kind of challenges kind of did you have to overcome, and how did you do that on, on this journey? Well, one of the things Teresa has embedded into me is another course she has where we come out of the boxes. And one of the boxes is the religious box. And that was a challenge for me because I felt like this book had to be completely Christian. And then I kept hearing the Holy Spirit saying no. Well, then when Teresa taught me about the religious box, I realized that Ali doesn't have to be within that Christian box, but that I can come out of the box and bring him to the world. And even though it's a subtle message, like my next book, Ali's going to learn about racism and he encounters a blue and green emu and all ostriches are pink in Ali's world. And so all the other ostriches start making fun of this emu because he's the wrong color. And so um, if anybody's read Kevin Deadman's book on the treasure hunt, um, Ollie's going to go on a treasure hunt. And he's what, what um, the brilliant blue dove, whose name is BBD. <laughs> BBD teaches Ollie that to change the world, you have to change your little corner of it. And so he learns how to give away his art to make people ha or other ostriches happy. Um, and he comes against that racism and becomes a friend of the emu. <laughs> so I'm really excited for that book, too, because that's one of my passions. That was a passion, Randy, when I was a little, little girl. I learned about slavery when I was 11, I think it was. And I was just bored by it. I was like, how could anybody have done this? And so that was a passion. And now I'm saying, God, who's that? Another one of the things God used is I taught children's church for three years and mm -hmm. I came up with little themes and my crafts matched and everything. And so that God's using that. Um, yep. Another thing that I have done is um, I've been involved with Sozo and now Claire, uh, <laughs> my daughter, Teresa has a, um, um, another, does she have another course that, oh yes, yeah, great to be free. That's what I was talking about. And Create to be Free is an inner healing program. So, Randy, that's been one of my challenges. I have come through a life of much abuse growing up. And so getting with Teresa and having her love for me and then having your love and having everybody else's love um, is what's developed me into being the painter I am and the minister. I love to minister to people in her healing. And I do that, like for instance, the Jesus painting where the little girl's laying in his arms, you know, that's totally in her healing right there. That's what mm. Jesus wants to do with all the little girls and boys inside of us. So dealing with children has also taught me how to deal with adults because we all have an inner child <laughs> and we all need that ministry. So coming into Create Academy and going through that Course, you get so much healing. It's, it's amazing. And then this last year, doing it as a leader and helping other people heal from those things was one of the major things that I love so much to minister to others. So I hope I answered what challenges it was. The other challenge is fear. I get a fear about, oh my gosh, I have to do 35 of these paintings, you know, and how am I going to how am I going to introduce this next part? And then God reveals it to me with every single painting. Wow. 
<laughs> it's just, um, for instance, on this Ollie here, um, he's sad because he can't re get rid of his fear. The tears on there. I never knew how to paint those, you guys. <laughs> and I looked at a tutorial and then I went, oh, I can do that. And then I was able <laughs> to put it onto Ollie. <laughs> so um, those are some of my challenges as I don't feel my writing coach asked if I would if I would illustrate any other children's books. And I'm like, oh, I don't even know how to do my own, you know? And then when they happen, it's totally God. The last few little things that go on them. And another challenge has been having to redo paintings. So here was one, I don't know if you can tell, but I started getting the top of it. You can't see Ollie. Um, and I didn't like it. And so I had to redraw it, repaint. Those are challenges. So it's kind of like, don't give up. Keep going. Uh, if it doesn't look right, especially watercolor, you guys, watercolor looks very ugly in your second wash. And it doesn't look like the painting until you do the details. And that's when God comes in and takes over and makes it happen. <laughs> so, Lori, yeah, I think you hit three good challenges. I mean, if any of you have that are watching have, have dealt with these same three challenges. One is you know, like past hurts and hangups or inner healing, um, fear, and then just getting to a technical place, right? Where it's like, I don't know how to get to that next place. And you just kind of gave us a great, I, great guidelines on how to kind of overcome each one of them. And uh, we have the incredible Chris Tracy here, and she's got a question for you. How do you bring God into your process? Oh, I put on headphones, which I think is extremely important to have mm -hmm. headphones and not just listen to your phone on speaker. Because when it gets in, and, uh, and I listen to worship, and when it gets into my ears, um, then all of a sudden I enter into this place with the Holy Spirit. And I know this is weird, but I talk to Ollie when I'm meeting <laughs> him, but I also talk to Holy Spirit. And I know that you know, the Holy Spirit is telling me like how to paint. I will get to a place where I'm like, God, I don't know how to do this. How do I make my mountains look right? And how do I make the depth in it? And that's what he reveals to me. And those things that are kind of without tutorials. So I think the closer I get to God and his creative side, I've been creative my whole life but I never painted. I did a lot of scrapbooking. I did a lot of, I worked in a, in a center for disabled adults for three years and I made cards with them and I, and they cut out things out of a, out of a cutter. And every time I see a Down syndrome person, which was yesterday at the Grand Canyon, <laughs> I gave her one of my Ollie stickers and she was like, Whoa, and she was so excited, you know? And so, um, uh, I hope I answered her question okay, but I think if you're not a worshiper, start there and <laughs> put on the headphones, sit down with your paper, do a tutorial while you're listening or watch the tutorial and then and then worship and see what God does. <laughs> yes. Yes, and I think it's had a follow-up question that I think you just answered too was what do you do while waiting for inspiration and ideas? So I think that's exactly it. Just you know, just sitting there with the Lord, just waiting. But I love the fact that you interacted with your character. <laughs> You're interacting with your imagination. I, I oh, that's, that's true. I don't know how many writers are here that are watching, but how many people interact with your characters as you're writing a story? It's probably very normal. It, it, it's getting you into the story. And so that it's pretty incredible. Um, somebody wants to know how many hours a day do you spend? Oh, that's Karen. Karen, our oh, incredible Karen, Karen wants to know. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I usually, my husband naps in the afternoon or newly retired. <laughs> And um, we were able to retire early. I'm not 65 yet, I'm 59. Um, but we were able to retire early. And he likes to nap in the afternoon because he wakes up early still. And so I usually paint for three hours while he's napping, at least two. And it's doing it over and over and over that I think is what's developing it. 
Another thing that I have done, like when I painted for that big ministry, I did all birds um, because that ministry was really into birds and they kind of use it as their mascot. And so I got a prophetic word out of every um, bird painting that I did. Here's the big macaw. Um, Randy, I was feeling like this macaw is prophetic for today. Um, blue is, you can get clear up. Uh, why do I keep calling Teresa Clarissa? My daughter's expecting a baby any day. So my daughter is right up in my mind right now. So Teresa also in her book, Create, what is it called? Born to Create. Um, she has a page in there that tells us the different colors and their prophetic meanings. And so blue represents the Holy Spirit and gold, of course, is glory and the presence of God. Black mm. is mysteries of God. When I painted this, I didn't know how to do the tail. And I put it down so you can picture this without the tail. And um, and so then as I was painting it, I put it down for a day. And then God showed me that he needed to be painted this way because he was getting ready for flight. And his flight is coming for healing for you guys so whether it's um, physical healing that you need or emotional healing, the closeness of the Holy Spirit, even how the closeness of how God created the macaw, where the um, blue is right next to the yellow, that gives us a message of God's love for us. And then, of course, the top of the macaw is green, and green stands for new beginnings. And mm -hmm. so I think one of the meanings of all these colors, there's more meanings for them. Um, but with the new beginnings, I feel like God wants to launch people into healing. Um, so that was kind of what I felt before we came today. <laughs> so. Well, that's so that's so good. As a matter of fact, if anybody, we want to probably go after some healing and maybe see some more of Lori's birds as we can sit there and just um, just ask the Holy Spirit to just say, bring forth the healing bring forth um, a breakthrough into your dreams. Um, as, as we've been listening and talking to um, uh, Lori about this. She's, she is just continues to just plug away. And that's one of the key things to achieving your dream is to um, push forward and just do something a little bit every day towards your dreams. And so, that is where we're at. And uh, yeah, um, what we want to do is, um, as we talk about, can you just talk a little bit as we start to wrap up here and we get ready to pray for some of these folks, go ahead and put something in the comments there um, if you need some prayer. Um, but how has community um, helped you uh, oh, break goodness. into your dreams? Well, okay. So first of all, here I was painting all these birds, right? And I was doing them on my own and I was getting prophetic words for all these people to go with them. But I didn't know that you could take art and minister to people out in public and stuff. And so getting into this community, we celebrate each other when God does these things. And this particular painting, I had a friend lay it on her mother and her mother was in a coma for two weeks. And she woke up from the coma through looking at this and God painted this for me. I can't, I just can't believe it. I sit back, sometimes I even cry because I always knew like back when I did flower arranging, remember in the eighties when we did all those dry flowers, um, God said to me one day, Lori, how would you feel if all your flowers jumped off the canvas or the thing I was putting them on? And how would that make you feel? And I said, well, God, I think that would make me mad or upset. And he said, that's how I feel when my people won't do what I'm telling them to do. And felt like I could tap into God's creativity and let the Holy Spirit create through me. I don't quite know how to explain how that happens. But anyway, so that's why I did the cause. I wanted another painting that represented healing. But um, so, for example, I was at the dentist with my grandchildren and a man came in 
And he was talking to the dentist personally. He had pulled his own tooth last time and was going to do it again and was and had absolutely no money. And that's another thing that has really blessed me lately. And every time I give, I keep getting huge checks of money. And it's just been an amazing thing. I've been able to help a lot of people. So God said, Lori, I want you to go to him. I heard him say he had hurt his hip on the 4th of July and was going to the emergency room. And I went and tracked him down to the emergency room, gave him a print of that owl, told him that I knew for sure God was turning his life around, gave him some money. And, um, you know, my little town, he from went and got him. I didn't know his name. And they went and got him out of the triage so I could talk to him. And I ministered to him. I prayed for him. He cried and cried and cried. And he had um, aged out of the foster care system. And um, they wouldn't do anything for him. And so uh, anyway, so that's how you can minister out in public with your art. So I would do, now this just happened, so we're not meeting right now in Great Academy, but I you, I get to come back either on our Facebook page or when God does this in person again, and then everyone would celebrate that and pray for that man, you know? So that's what's so exciting about community. I'm sorry, I got long-winded. Well, we're going to. We're going to bring it through because what, what, what I want to do is talk about those testimonies you just shared. You A, a little bit back, you said, there, I don't know how this happened, but it happened because you took a step. It happened, you took a risk. And, and when you take a step, when you take a risk and you step into what you feel God wants you to do, it's like you give him, he just says yes. And it, it's like he gets activated to go, move on your behalf. And so that's what happens in community. We have one another to support each other and um, go from there. And so um, um, let me see, I'm gonna get this question right here. This one here is like, I, I like this one. Um, if you could say one thing to those listening to encourage them in their dreams, what would you say? And then, well, we got somebody that wants to pray for some healing and we'll come and do a little okay. prophetic in that. but. <laughs> Let's, uh, what would you want um, to say? I think, I think that my dreams were to give myself deadlines for things that God was leading me to paint. And I would think like, I got a couple bears going on, on down there that I've been so discouraged in. And so I've prayed and prayed and prayed and asked God, how do I fix these bears? They don't, I guess you can't see them. Um, you know, how do I fix them? And so he revealed to me to buy these weird paintbrushes. And these weird paintbrushes, whether you're doing acrylics or watercolors, they make they make fur, they make leaves, they make <laughs> just by pressing the brush down and moving it. And I didn't know that. And um, and so God told me that too. So how do I? I think so. Giving yourself deadlines, praying, asking God what you should paint. It could be something very simple. These guys live in my um, in my yard and eat my bird seed and everything. And so I decided to paint them. But then I added, God told me to add a baby bird to it. And so um, that's their baby. I've never seen their babies in, in real life, but God told me to paint them. And so I did, and they sat on my canvas for a long time and I would get stuck and not know how to do it. And then God would tell me, you need a shadow right here, Lori, because the beak's just hanging out there. And he would tell me like, you need a shadow here. And I didn't know that Randy. So that's kind of how I partner with the Holy Spirit for dreams. My dream was to be creative since a little girl and for justice because of my abuse. I really call for justice. So my regular paintings, well, no, not just my regular paintings, but Ollie, I got a really funny one up there of snakes and they got funny faces on and glasses one of the girls in Create Academy said that she was deathly, deathly afraid of snakes and wouldn't go to Arizona, wouldn't go to Australia, wouldn't go anywhere where there were snakes. And 
it was during our leadership thing and our leadership thing, we do a final project at the, at, in the middle of the year and then at the end of the year. And at the end of the year, when I presented how much of Ali I had done, I had those snakes. And she wrote to me personally and told me God healed her fear of snakes through that picture. And it's a, it's for the children's book, not for adults, but yet I believe God's going to heal adults too. So your dream, I would start with looking at what your dream was when you were little. Are we running out of time? Randy, we can't hear you on. Um, you're muted on your phone. No, there I'm, you go. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, there, there was there on purpose. But um, so thank you for sharing that and what your passion is and what your heart is. We do have some people that would um, wanted us to pray for some ministry uh, um, for healing. And so we've got Pat, Patricia Humphrey um, Webb. Uh, I'd like prayer for healing from Parkinson's. Oh, my um, gosh. She has a scripture and um, she has that mind. You know, she she is standing on a scripture, but uh I know when I was in the hospital, God, uh, Lori, you painted a picture of of uh, that staff of, of the serpent from Exodus, right? And so how Moses, God told Moses to have people look at that staff, look at that serpent, and they would be healed. And so can we, uh, you can you uh, sit there and pray that prayer of faith over Patricia? Yeah, that was another thing that I I keep my my prophetic words on a file on my computer um, because I don't want to forget the things that God has said, um, like to other people. So with Randy, it was like when I saw that scripture about, you know, they weren't just serpents, they were fiery serpents. And then he says to look up there on, you know, at the, at the serpent and they'll be healed. And I was like, well, God, why didn't you just keep the snakes from being there in the first place? And so, um, but it's a picture of Jesus and it's a picture of Jesus being raised. And so the old Testament parallels the new Testament. And so now we look to Jesus for our healing, right? Randy, now yeah. our, you guys can be a part of that healing. So, Let's put, do you want me to put the owl or the macaw back up to pay for it? You, you, whatever piece of art you feel the Holy Spirit leading you to use to pray for Patricia. And Darby said that she'd like to have some prayer for healing too. She's not specific at what. Okay, so it's Darby and, and who was the Parkinson's? Patricia. Patricia, okay. Hi, Patricia. <laughs> and um, Darby, right, you said? Yes. Okay. All righty. Well, let's go after this, you guys. I want you to look at this owl. This owl has a heart back here, and it's got three tongues in it, which is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's what's propelling the owl forward. It's bright, bright colors because it's going with determination and going with healing. God even made this into a face. I don't know if it's a face. God or not, but it gave me courage to look to that. So let's look to this and um, let's go after it for Patricia first. Father God, so Patricia, just look at this, okay, while we pray for you. Um, Father God, we just ask right now in the name of Jesus that the healing you've given me so far for leukemia, um, Patricia, I've had it for 19 years and God has kept me alive for so time. Um, he hasn't taken it completely away, but I'm still believing for that. And I've seen people healed, even why I haven't been healed yet. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, I just silence the words of the enemy. And we just ask God that you would come down um, on Patricia from her head down to her very toes. Let her feel your presence there. We pray for um, strengthening of her muscles. We speak to the shaking and we say no more that Holy Spirit is coming with determination and fierceness to you right now, all the way down into your body from the, I feel like there's been a lot of discouragement with you, Patricia, that you've prayed over and over and over again. So I give to you the determination God's given to me to seek my healing. Patricia, I know it's going to happen for you. 
<laughs> I know that God's going to take this cloud of fog from your head and from your heart and the disappointment that's been in your heart over and over again. I feel God coming to heal your heart right now. So put your hand on your heart and just receive what God has for you. And so, Lord, we pray for Darby, too. Let's back up the Nikah. <laughs> and we ask, Lord, that the Holy Spirit comes to her, bringing the glory of God and the healing to her body, Lord. Whatever the ailment is, whatever's going on with her, or if it's heart healing and inner healing she needs, Lord, I pray that you would come to her heart right now and that you would come and heal it. And let that spill over onto her body. There's a prayer, Darby, that I pray a lot. And that's, God, reveal your love to me by, like, I can't find my keys. And I'll ask and God will show me where they are. And so, Lord, I pray that you reveal your love to Darby through healing today. Come to her body, Lord. Come to her heart and come to her spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank yeah, Darby, we just we just say your knees, any pain in your knees, just go away. We just we just speak life um, to every ligament, every uh, MCL, ACL, etc., and just pray that your knees will just inflammation will go away, pain will go away um, in Jesus' name. And then um, Carlos, um, he's self-employed, and he, he's got a prayer for more jobs. And Carlos, I just got this interesting picture I just want to release over you. I just feel, even though it's um, um, maybe a picture of, uh, you know, just a bottle with a bunch of little lightning bugs in it, um, I just say that I just want to speak over you. I want to speak life to fresh ideas. When you're self-employed, you need fresh ideas and then you need favor. And you so you have people that um, need your services. And so I just pray that those ideas will come forth and that people will call upon you to know you, to find you, to, um, to desire to have your services. So we thank you for those jobs. And so- mm -hmm. I even feel say, like the little, the little fireflies that God's going to give him places to little, little bits of Holy Spirit here and there, like a little firefly making that light. But God's going okay. to use him in lots of yep. those areas. Well, what a fun time, Lori. Yeah. Thank you for everybody that, uh, thank you for everybody that um, um, just stayed with us today and um, joined us and heard these incredible stories. And I'm, I'm just so thrilled, Lori, for the journey that God has you on. And we just wanna sit there and kind of close by imparting just an unlocking of the dreams in the mm -hmm. hearts of those that are watching today and watching this on a replay. And so can you just release an importation to all so that I shall they, do that. They so here's my may book, find guys, their right? Ollie picture. <laughs> so Lord God, for people who are writers, children's writers, and illustrators, and um, whatever their dreams are, God, that you would pull that out of them. You would put those dreams in them the day they were conceived. And so Lord, you have that plan. For their lives and the enemy has uh, taken that and twisted it in a lot of people's lives. So God, I pray that you bring those dreams back that you put in them long ago. And God, the dreams that you have given to me and the ability you've given to me to do this, I impart that to whoever's watching in the name of Jesus. What he did for me becomes your prophecy. My mm -hmm. testimony is your prophecy. And so God, just let that prophecy come through that you're going to bring creativity to people and you're going to show them how to bring their dreams to pass. And those dreams don't have to be art, Randy, right? They can That's all really, no, it could be businesses like for Carlos. Mm -hmm. It could be, it could be um, just a, a dream to solve a situation in life and society. So mm. we look at how Saul was so troubled and it would only go away when David played his heart. 
And that was creativity for David because he had a worshiper's heart. So good. So good. So we thank you all for joining us. Tabitha, I saw you out there. Write that children's book, girl. Um, and uh, we've got some other children's writers there. Um, I, I just love it that they're just sitting there going. If you feel like your dreams were unlocked today, um, if you feel like you had new ideas, can you just please put that in the comments there just so that'll encourage Lori because she, yeah. she just has a heart. She has such a passion to see people come into um, what their life purposes was. Just like she's starting to walk into her new season of, with Ollie. Um, yes. Who knows what levels of um, growth that's going to take her to. But uh, we just thank you for joining us, each and every one of you. So just uh, we just speak life to your dreams and let Amen. the puzzle pieces start coming together to make that picture a little more clear so that you can walk forward. Join us on Monday. Um, there's part of Create Academy. We're going to do uh, session two of um, the dream um, uh, webinars. And we're going to be talking about how to, you know, disappointments and uh, dead ends can can lead to um, your next phase of your dreaming um, life. So, um, yeah, I would love to have you join us then. And then we'll see you again here next week. And uh, so, so happy. So, so glad you joined us. So Thank God bless you, so you all. Much. And remember, you're all born to create. Born Hallelujah. to create. <laughs> Yay. We will.